we should just take a couple of minutes to kind of analyze what, it, what a violin, I'm going to use the word violin, by the way, I know we have cellists and violists and all that kind of stuff, but I'm going to use the word violin as a universal term. What it is and how it works, because if you understand that and you understand the principles behind how it's made, then it, some, of the, some of the other stuff falls into place, including how things get adjusted. So basically what I do is I always start out by going like this, and I'd say, you know, has anybody ever been to Radio Shack or Best Buy and seen a, seen a speaker? And most people say yes, because they've seen these things, they have the cover off. But what happens is they have a big speaker, they have a big box, and then they'll have a big speaker and a little speaker. And what they're doing is they're taking the audio spectrum that kind of looks like this, and they're cutting it down the middle. And this is the bass frequencies, and these are the treble frequencies. And what they're doing is they're using the bass frequencies to be reproduced by this speaker called the woofer. And then the treble frequencies are going to be reproduced by the little tiny speaker called the tweeter. It's a pretty simple idea, you know. You have a little tiny bell that makes a high pingy noise. You have a great big bell or a great big organ pipe that makes the lower noises. Well, the reason they're different sizes is because they're made of the same material. Okay? On a violin, the back of the violin is the tweeter. The front of the violin is the woofer. It's the same system. It's 300-year-old technology. It works great. But basically, it's the same system. The reason they're the same size, instead of different sizes, is because they're different materials. The back of the violin is made out of something very hard and dense. Generally, it's maple. The top of the violin is basically made out of spruce or pine, which effectively has the same density as balsa wood, except for the little stripes that you see running through it, where basically the growth of the, the growth of the tree slows down in the wintertime, so the cells are closer together. But basically what you've got is a woofer and a tweeter, and then inside the violin, here's the, we're going to do a, kind of a little drawing like this. Inside the violin, this is the back, that's the tweeter, that's the top, that's the woofer. Inside the violin is the sound post. And what happens is the vibrations come in through the bridge, and they get distributed around the top by the bass bar, and then the treble vibrations go down in the back via the sound post. Now what happens is this balance between these two plates is how you get a sound where it's not too much treble, not too much bass, okay? And how this little stick is adjusted can make a huge, huge difference. You can have the exact same instrument be real bright and real ringy for like concertmaster work where you want to be heard above the rest of the section, or you can push it in a little bit and have it be a little softer adjustment where you can use a different kind of wood and you can get a, a big smooth kind of a smoky sound out of the exact same instrument. So for me, how, you, how an instrument is maintained is almost as important as what the quality of the instrument is to start with. It's, it's a basic thing that you just, 